So I want to welcome Corning to the booth. We've got John and Gabriella. Yes. All right. So welcome to our coverage. So what's new at Corning? Yeah, so big thing that's new oh, at Corning. Hang on one second. Okay, is he up? All right, you're, you're live now. Live now? All right. Yep. Great. So what's big and new in Corning is uh, Gorilla Glass 4 is one of our new products we're highlighting here at CES. And, uh, you know, what we're always doing at Corning is innovating. And our innovation with Gorilla Glass 4 is really listening to the consumers and understanding that drop is the biggest concern the consumers have. Yep. They don't want to drop their phone. But they do. <clears throat> they don't want to break it. So what have we done with Gorilla Glass 4 is we've gone back, looked at our processes, we looked at our composition of glass, and we've came out with an even more damage-resistant version of Gorilla Glass that can actually increase survivability in drop events up to two times. So you can go two times higher with your phone in a drop, and you'll have even higher probability of survival. Wow. Yes. Yep. So we have some demonstrations that I can show you today. Sure. But um, first thing that I want to talk a little bit about is how did we develop this product, and we did it by understanding what are the surfaces that phones fail on. And this yep. is actually a piece of asphalt, which people are probably <laughs> very familiar with, and they would cringe every time they drop their phone into a parking lot. And actually, my daughter broke one on some concrete the other day. All right, yep, yep. Yep. great example. <laughs> yeah. So as part of developing the product, we actually went to a, uh, a sandpaper surface for developing the glass, and this is 180-grit sandpaper, and is very rough. I don't know if you want to feel that or let yep. the folks know yep. how rough it is, but that's actually what we do our product testing on. And, uh, you know, what this allows us to do is develop the product. And when we get to this higher damage resistance, we can enable either higher reliability with phones, or we can also enable the manufacturers to go thinner with their cover glass. Right. And we have some examples of actually Gorilla Glass 4 in the market today at 400 microns thick or 0.4 millimeters. Right. Yep. <clears throat> so we have a demonstration that I can show you. And actually, I'll have you do a little hands-on if sure. you like. Sure, absolutely. Um, so I have some samples of glass, and I'm going to have you go through this and just give you a real real time feel. So what we have here is a mouse pad that we're going to uh, put some samples on. We have a pencil that you're going to use to push on the samples. Okay. And what we're going to do is look at some samples that have been abraded. And these have been abraded very severely. I'm sure if we could see that inside of the circle, there's actually a hazy region yep. where we've actually sandblasted the glass. Yep. <clears throat> so very significant <laughs> damage put in there. And what we have here first is a piece of basic strengthened kind of window soda lime glass that's 0.7 millimeters thick. What I'm going to ask you to do is push right in the center of that sample with the eraser end. Oh, with the eraser yep, end. And try to break it. It broke. It broke. You heard it break? Yeah. So we can show that to the folks here and see if there's I you heard can see the fracture yep. there. Yep. Okay. So next, we have, we're going to go a little bit thinner. As okay. glasses get better, they enable you to go thinner. Right. And this is an alternative alumina silicate glass. And you can see we have the same abrasion mark here. And this is 0.55 millimeters thick. So okay. we're going a little bit thinner. And we'll go ahead and have you try your and hand at that and one. And we're going to bust this one, too. You're going to bust that one, too. Yep. Yep. yep broke there it. it goes. And I think that yep. one shattered better. It, yep. You can actually catch a little bit and get that in the light. You can see the fractures yep. we have on that sample as well. Now, you know, the, the, the best product that's in the market today prior to Gorilla Glass 4 was Gorilla Glass 3. So here okay. we are with 0.55 Gorilla Glass 3. <laughs> and I want you to try your hand at that one. I think I had to push a little harder. Good, good luck, yes. So can I turn yep. the pencil around? You can turn the pencil. <laughs> 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 will, will I break it with this end? No. Nope. Nope, you won't be able to. Wow. Yep. But, but that's Gorilla Glass 3, and that's 0.55 millimeters thick. But here we have Gorilla Glass 4. Same abrasion on the surface here, you can see. And we're going down to 400 microns, 0.4 millimeters thick. And this one, again, you can try to put your hand on with the eraser there. Push away. Nope. You know, and this is, what's enabling, this is what's enabling the manufacturers to go to thinner devices and be able to allow um, nope. basically getting thinner and thinner form factors, but keeping that reliability and keeping that damage resistance high. You know, I think, and the thing that I, the question that you're going to have is, you know, the direct impact stuff is you've got well protected, but, you know, this is where it happens, right? Yeah. On the edge. So what's the story then well, that you've come up with? Well, it's not just, no, actually it isn't from the edge. When we look at devices, it's a great question. Because right. when we looked at developing Gorilla Glass 4, we spent a lot of time looking at broken devices. When you look at the way they're designed, actually most devices do not fail from the edge. Really? They fail very close to the edge. And oh. if you look at it under a microscope, it's actually on this surface, but very, very close to the edge. That's interesting. Yes. Yep. 
So yep. where does the impact zone? Where's the where's the most popular impact zone? Is it hit on the edge and it just shatter here or around the perimeter is the most common place where you'll see uh, failures originate? Yes. Okay. Yep. And that's right. mostly because phones will fall in very yeah, weird shallow places, angles, yep. weird angles. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So 0.4 millimeters, what you're down to? Yes. Wow. I remember. I know we've done a couple of demos here in past years where we had glass. I mean, literally <laughs> fly. I mean, appreciate that we didn't have that happen today. But yeah. uh, so where where do we go from here? There's only so thin you can go, right? Well, I mean, we're always innovating, so we're looking to go even thinner. Um, in the future, and we always have our research and development facility working on better damage resistance and thinner glasses. You know, and personally, I'd rather have a higher damage level and deal with a little thicker device than have a device that's got, it's super, you know, I now everyone loves the thin stuff, but I'd rather have a device that I know for two years I can beat up. Yep. You know, and then it comes time to upgrade or trade in, because I think, I don't know, most people a couple of years is what they hold their phones for, yeah. so... Yeah. Um, but uh, still, you please put a case on your phones. Don't be stupid like my 18-year-old was and not have a case on her phone. So, uh, so that's that's pretty crazy. But you've got s some more stuff. What uh, cor does Corning do? Fiber. Corning does fiber, and oh. what we're showing here is fiber optic Thunderbolt and USB cables. Oh. So we're breaking the distance barrier of copper while being thinner, lighter, and stronger. So. This here, yep. big, thick, yep. heavy, yep. boo. It's got a repeater. You'll see here it requires power at one That's end. That's right. That's what it takes to get 15 meters That's right. in copper electrical for a USB 3. Yep. No, hold, hold it. Show, okay. show the heft. Big it is. Heft. It's, it's heavy. heavy. It's, it's heavy. heavy. It's probably good. And it's just ugly. This is its fiber op or a fiber optic equivalent. Now, I'm, I just want you guys to understand, you guys all know that there's uh, distance limitations on devices. And, and when you go longer distance, you have to have extremely better cables. And so you've gone to a fiber USB 3. This is not itself powered by the USB port. Right. So what happens is, is we take the, uh, well, we do an optoelectrical conversion in the connector heads. We take okay. the electrical signal. We convert it to an optical yeah. signal. There's a little bitty laser beam. Whee! This is so smart. Shoots it over the fiber, and then we convert it back at the other end. I do consulting on the aviation side, too, and aviation folks are going to go crazy over this. We have talked to a couple, and they are very excited. Yeah. They're very excited. But you're correct. With the USB, we take the uh, power from the A side yep. to power the B side conversion. But Thunderbolt, on the other hand, Thunderbolt was designed with fiber optics in mind. So we can pull the power for the conversion from both the A and the B side. Gotcha. Now, what's really interesting about Thunderbolt is that the protocol, again, fiber optics in mind, uh, has a maximum of three meters that it will allow electrical cables. Because right. we're talking about yep. up to 10 gigabits bi-directional right. dual channel with Thunderbolt. That's right. And then for Thunderbolt 2, they multiplex those lanes yep. to get up to 20 gigabits. Yep. So the, and it, and it, it's not physically possible to go longer than Thunderbolt cable because there's not enough it, it does exactly. that. Right, sorry. Exactly. No, that was, I'm sure that was me. <laughs> so we, on the other hand, go up to 60 meters. That's crazy. 60 meters with Thunderbolt. And because we're taking the power from both the A and the B sides, right. we allow, that allows for electrical isolation in between. So all the benefits you know and love from Thunderbolt, display and video, uh, excuse me, dis video and data on yep. the same cable because it's DisplayPort and PCI Express. Genius. But there's more. So everybody. Let, let me take a picture of those sure. while they're down there yeah. because I'm going to have some. I know there's a certain engineer that's watching this right now. He's like flipping out. So, yes, Andy, I know you're watching. Go ahead. So the next thing that I want to show is everybody's worried that fiber optics is fragile. Anyway. So we're talking, we're, again, it's corning. Yep. So we're talking, we use a patented corning fiber along with a cable design that further protects it. So what I have here is one of my cables with the ends cut off yep. and basically a supercharged laser pointer. We have it bent at 180 degrees yep. 
and we're putting it in these one inch channels, yep. which I like to say is a proxy for stepping on it, yep. slamming it in a door, yep. rolling your chair over it, letting it get tangled up in your bags. Yep. I challenge you. I, I, I'm familiar with fiber and I know if I sat here and wrenched on it for a while, I could probably break it, but mm -hmm. it would, no. no. If I sat here and, and twisted and spun this for 30 minutes, it wouldn't? No. Oh. Really? Yeah. It's that good. It's that good. Okay, it's, it was designed to withstand the abuse that the consumer electronics space is used to. We've been using this same fiber and block through the entire show. Every 10 minutes we've been doing this demo where we take it out and fiddle with it and have somebody so, try to break so it. So are you going to be able are you going to be selling this to OEMs and are they going to be able to terminate this with their own cables or is this going to be strictly a, a corning product? This is a corning product. We sell it pre-terminated because again there's that optoelectrical conversion yep. that's happening. Yep. So everything you need is right here. So you can buy these apple.com, amazon, oh, so sorry, so sorry some other competitors. I just absolutely love this. Wow. So I have one more thing to tell okay. you about. One more thing. We're actually running a contest right now okay. for you and all your listeners and viewers. We want you to take cables, our cables, or if you don't have them, show us how you would use them. Okay. Show us how this breakthrough that allows you to do distances you previously haven't been able to do with longer, thinner, lighter, stronger cables, show us how you use them. Upload them. And we're going to pick the best ones, and the top prize is $10,000. Do you make this in an, a smoke-free cable that can go in airplanes? It's non-poly? At this time, no. But we reserve the right to introduce other cables at any given moment. Because that's going to be a requirement in the aviation industry. It's not going to be able to smoke if, it, if there's a fire. But if you, I, I, can, I could put up together a heck of a video if, if we could do that. But I have some other ideas. All right. <laughs> cool. So what is the retail on these going to be? So they're actually available now. Okay. So uh, Thunderbolt, a 5.5 meter is going to run you $179. Okay. USB, a 10 meter, 109 But for if you need the distance, that is a small price to pay because otherwise you have to go through a converter, run a whole bunch of stuff. It's, you know, it's ugly. This is neat, simple, and not heavy. Not heavy. Not heavy and durable. Yeah. I'm, you, this is a, do you guys win an innovation award for this? I, <laughs> I, I don't think so, but I think we were robbed. I, I, I think you were robbed. I think we were I robbed. I really, and, and people that fully understand the, uh, and I have a lot of video people that are watching this, and especially from this type of stuff, they're like, oh my goodness. So this is fantastic. And I'm surprised you're able to get the, the conversion package in really that small of a, like John said, we have some really talented scientists yeah, working yes. on uh, on everything. Corning, you know, you brought me glass year after year. This year, you really stepped it up. I'm I'm excited with what you guys have done, and wow, congratulations! Corning.com to find the product. Yes. All right, there's money out there on the table, folks. Ten grand. Show them the most useful way to use. Now, do they have to own the cable and string it to get the 10 grand? Actually, no. No purchase necessary. Oh. So show us how you can use it. You got to get creative if you don't have the cable. Oh, yes, you do. But um, it's no purchase necessary. All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming out, both of you. John, uh, John thank, you for, and, thank you. And Gabrielle, thanks so much thanks for so coming. Thanks so much. Oh, thank wow. You. Uh, this has been like three or four super winners today. I'm, I'm like, wow.